Okay, coders, in this video, we are actually going to start working on our AI project, and I'm going to break this project into several videos because this tutorial can get pretty deep and involves a lot of what I will call more advanced functionality. Now, I want to create this series in such a way that anyone can pick it up and create their own flocking AI in the future. Now, I have created AI tutorials in the past, and based on view viewers' feedback, I think I've learned from my previous mistakes, so... As I said, I'm going to break this series up into several videos. We are going to start with the setup needed in this video before creating videos covering specific functionality that is going to update several scripts along the way. So let's get started by setting up our environment and one of our scripts. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is actually create an empty game object. And we can just change the name of this to level. And the next thing we need to do is go to our main camera and we're going to change the background to black and we're gonna change our size to 150. Okay, now that we have completed the updates to our level, let's create a few folders that we are going to need in the future. So our first folder is going to be scenes. Our next folder will be scripts. And our last folder that we're going to need is going to be called prefabs. Okay, now that we have our folders created, let's go ahead and create our scripts that we are going to need for this series. Again, we are just going to create all of our scripts now so that we don't have to do this later. So let's go into our scripts folder. We're going to right click create a C sharp script and our first one can be called member. Let's create another one. This one can be called member config. Okay, let's create another one and we can just call this one level. And one last script here that we can call enemy. Okay, now that we have created our scripts, let's go ahead and open up the level script and start working on it. Now that we've got our level script open, let's go ahead and add some variables that we're going to need. We're gonna need a public transform that we can just call member prefab. We're also going to need a public int. We can call this number of members, oops, not members, members. We're gonna need a public list type of member and we can just call this members. We're gonna need a public list type of enemy. We can just call this enemies. We're also going to need a public float for our bounds, public float spawn radius okay so obviously we have a prefab reference here we're going to instantiate all of our objects at runtime so we need to know how many we want to instantiate we need to have a list of the members in the scene and a list of the enemies in the scene we are going to make our members and enemies wrap around the screen if they go too far to the right then they will wrap around to the left and we also need a spawn radius for instantiation now inside of our start function for this script, we're going to say members is equal to a new list type of member and enemies is equal to a new list type of enemy. And now the next thing we want to do is actually spawn members. So let's go ahead and create a quick spawning function that we can use. So I'm just gonna say void spawn we're going to take two parameters here we're going to take a transform for the prefab and an integer for our count so the number of things that we want to instantiate so in order to instantiate a lot of objects we're going to use a for loop so we're going we are going to say for int i is equal to zero i is less than count i plus plus and now we just need to call our instantiate function. So we're going to say instantiate. We're going to instantiate our prefab. And we're going to instantiate it at a new vector three. And for our x, we're going to say random dot range. And we can just pass in our negative spawn radius and our positive spawn radius. For our Y, we're just gonna pass in zero. And then for our Z, I'm gonna copy random.range here and pass that as our Z. And finally, for the rotation, 
we are going to pass in quaternion dot identity. Okay, so now let's actually replace our spawn men members comment here with the actual spawn function. And we're just gonna pass in our member prefab and our number of members. Now we could do the same thing with our enemies as well. So let's go ahead and say spawn. Um, well, actually we need another variable here. So we're gonna add a public transform and we can just call this enemy prefab. And in our spawn function, we're going to say enemy prefab. And then we also, well, we need another variable. We're just going to say public int number of enemies. And then pass our number of enemies into the spawn function as well. And we can actually delete our update function for this script. Okay, let's go ahead and save that. And now let's go back out to our scene. And it doesn't look like we have any errors, which is awesome. Now we haven't put together our prefab yet, but I will go ahead and actually go out to my level and let's add in the level script. And now I actually have some prefabs set up in my earlier testing. You won't have this, but I do want to show you just a quick demonstration. So I'm going to drag in my earlier prefabs and just say we want like 200 members and like five enemies. And we can set our bounds to like 150. Uh, let's set it to 100. And our spawn radius, we're just gonna set that to 50. Now, if we press play, we should have things spawning in the scene. Okay, so immediately we have some errors here and it looks like they all spawned in pretty much one area. So let's go figure out what's going on here. Okay. All right, I see what's going on. So that's actually from my different script, so we don't have to worry about that. But we do have to worry about the actual instantiation. So let's go back out to our script here. And some of you might have noticed this when I was creating the script, but some of you might not have. And this error was actually left in there on purpose. And this happens a lot when people are working with 2D. So as you can see here, we're instantiating on the X, not on the Y and on the Z. Well, when you're working in 2D, you always want to use the X and the Y because Z is forward and won't really have an effect in two dimensions. So let's go ahead and move our random dot range here. Paste it and remove our extra comma. Now let's save it. And now when we go back out and press play, we should see some more randomization as far as the spawning goes. Awesome, we definitely see that. We're still running into those errors, but that's from a different script, so don't worry about those. But that's what we want when we spawn our objects. We want them to be sort of all over the world. Okay, very cool. Okay, coders, now in accordance with time, I'm going to end this tutorial here. We are going to continue this series by adding more functionality e each video. So definitely stay tuned to this series to get all of the benefits and learn everything that we're doing here. Also, we are on Patreon now, so please check that out. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.